When you're just getting started with welding, one of the most intimidating types of metal is aluminum. It heats up much faster than steel and can be unforgiving if the technique isn't dialed in. On top of that, aluminum joints can behave very differently depending on how they're set up, which makes choosing the right weld type crucial. But what if we told you that aluminum welding doesn't have to be scary? In fact, one of the easiest ways to tackle aluminum is with the aluminum spool gun. The spool feeds aluminum wire directly from the gun, which helps prevent the soft, malleable wire from jamming or birds nesting, while also making it easier to maintain a consistent arc. The shortened wire feed path means you can lay clean, consistent welds faster without needing the extra time and precision that TIG welding requires. It's a great tool for repairing trailer bodies, fabricating marine equipment, welding radiators, and so much more. In this video, we're breaking down four essential welds that every aluminum welder should know. Butt joints, lap joints, T-joints, and corner joints. These are all welds that you'll see on almost every aluminum project. And mastering them will make aluminum welding work a breeze. We invited our friend and local welding professional, Vince, to walk us through each joint up close and show off the proper techniques and highlight what a good finished weld looks like. First up, we're starting with the most common joint you'll use, the butt weld. Before we pass it over to Vince, if you enjoy the content and feel like we helped you master a new skill, please give us a like and subscribe to the channel. And check out the link in the description below. That way we can keep making content every week. Now let's get into the video. All right guys, so we are getting ready to start our first weld here. We have a piece of 1 8 inch uh, aluminum scrap metal. What I'm gonna do is just run a flat bead on the top. I'm gonna be checking for bead profile. I'm gonna be making sure that our settings are conforming to our material and that we're getting good results. Uh, one thing you guys might notice is that I'm standing instead of sitting. I'm only doing that because a spool gun is typically going to be far more cumbersome than a regular torch or a TIG torch. So instead of sitting and kicking my elbow up, I'm just going to stand. Again, always be comfortable while you're welding for the best results. So I'm going to drop my hood. We'll get right into this. Uh, again, torch angle is going to be about 15 degrees leaned off of it towards, towards uh, the push of the weld. So we'll go in, we're going to get 15 degrees, and then we're just going to start pushing from there. We'll reevaluate our settings after we check out our weld bead. All right, so it seems like our settings are dialed in pretty good. We have a good bead profile. It's not sinking. It's not too much too, too built up from being cold. So we're going to roll with these settings. We're going to jump into a couple uh, other types of welding, and we'll show you what they look like as well. All right, so the first one we're going to jump into is your standard butt weld, just like we did all the other processes. Uh, this is going to be fairly similar. What we're going to do is make sure that our torch angle is straight onto the joint. We're not favoring one plate or the other with our material fill. And then again, we're going to be at about 15 degrees here as we're pushing our puddle down the seam. So I'm going to drop my hood. We already have this tacked. We already have it cleaned and prepped. I'm drop my hood and we're going to get to welding and see how it looks. All right, so we just finished this up, guys. For you to see black soot, it's pretty normal, pretty typical out of a spool gun, again, because we're not doing the cleaning effect. One thing you will notice on this is that this plate did begin to split at the end of the weld here, just because of the heat transfer. This was a cold piece that we didn't preheat, so in the beginning, the settings are, they actually look fairly cold, and then you, you see them begin to kind of level out and begin perfect, and then as we approach the end of the weld here, they start to get hot to the point where it actually blew a hole through the butt weld there. All right, guys, so you can see that we've moved on to our lap joint now, and you can also see that I'm sitting again. Uh, reason being is because we have a layered joint now, so I want to be 45 degrees to the joint. Um, again, we're still not going to favor one plate or the other, but now that I have to be 45 to my joint instead of straight up, I feel more comfortable sitting. So again, we're going to approach this like that. I have this cleaned and prepped already. We have it tacked on the backside. I'm going to drop my hood. We're going to run this lap bead, and we'll evaluate what it looks like when I'm finished.
All right, guys, so that's our lap joint. Came out pretty well. All of our settings, our angle, all applied properly. So next up, we're gonna move on to a T-joint. All right, guys, so we have our T-joint set up here. Um, basically the same principles as the lap joint. Uh, we are going to make sure that we're 45 degrees into the joint itself, the weld joint, and then um, about 15 degrees back from the push. So we wanna make sure that we're not putting too much heat or material into the top or the base piece. So I'm gonna drop my hood now. We already have this tacked and prepped, and uh, we'll show you what this looks like when we're done. All right, and there we have a proper T-joint weld. Um, up next, we're gonna move on to a corner joint. All right, guys, so we have our corner joint set up, tacked and prepped here. Um, again, I'm standing because of the torch angle and the cumbersomeness of this spool gun. So now that we have this set up, we're gonna apply the same technique, 50% on the right piece, 50% on the left piece. We're gonna keep 15 degrees off the angle while we're pushing, and then uh, we'll get this done, and as soon as we're done, we'll show you the results. And there you go, we have another corner joint done. This time it's done with an aluminum spool gun. And just like that, we've mastered the four most common aluminum joints using a spool gun. With the tips and tricks in this video, you now have the foundation you need to tackle just about any aluminum project. And remember, practice is key. Aluminum can be tricky at first, but the more you work with it, the easier and more predictable it becomes. Keep welding away, and we'll see you in the next video.